Yo, what's up, guys? Brian Jalbert here. We are the Not Fucking Around crew, Jalbert Brothers in the house, with director Chris Foster. Chris, how you doing, brother? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, brother. Anytime, man. So what we're going to do is we want to talk about, because it's crazy what you did. I hear it all the time. How the hell did you make a movie on two Gs, man? Two grand on a movie. And let's, you know what? Before we talk about you making it on 2000, let's talk about your past a little bit. What were you as, you know, were you into this as a kid? Like, what's the deal? Yeah, you know, I th- honestly, I think I'm still a kid. But, I mean, I, um, I started, I guess my earliest kind of adoption of storytelling came from playing with action figures. Okay. Um, I, when I look back, that's kind of what I see first as like the first sign of, Hey, maybe I'll, I'll choose a path that heavily relies on storytelling. Um, and then after that, you know, just like everyone else started making stupid videos with my friends that eventually turned into uh, short films, which picked up a little bit of traction and, and it just got more and more serious after that. Okay. And, um, I, I, you know, after high school, I it was my senior year of high school, and I assumed, I, I guess, uh, if I want to be a filmmaker, I'm going to go to film school. I guess that's kind of what uh, you're supposed to do to, to be in the film industry. So I applied to, um, you know, Full Sail University, it's supposed to be one of the best film schools in the, in the world. So In Orlando, yeah. In Orlando, yep. And uh, I was looking at going there, and at the last second, I was like, you know what, I read... Um, I read uh, Rebel Without a Crew uh, by Rob Rodriguez and kind of decided that I didn't need to. So I, I took a tiny portion of what would have been my you know, tuition to go there, a very, very tiny percentage, and just decided to make a movie. Uh, and I guess that's kind of how it started. So hold up. You made a movie and you didn't go to uh, school to do this? I didn't. I actually did not go to school, no. Awesome, man. Awesome. So how did you – so as a kid, you were said you filmed stuff. Is that how you got your skills um, with running the camera and things like that? Yeah, that's definitely where I got my technical skills. Um, it started off with just – like I distinctly remember um, when I figured out that you can stitch two pieces of video together. Okay. And I think that that was – for some reason that never – occurred to me that I would be able to do that on just a laptop. And when I figured that out, I think that that was really like the turning point of, okay, I can make some really cool stuff if I can, you know, cut the camera and then start it back up and, and put two clips together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's where I got my technical knowledge. Definitely. Um, and then when it comes to like, you know, storytelling, I think that that just came from doing it so many times and, you know, thinking, wow, this is horrible. I'm going to do this next time and, and constantly just trying to get better by doing it. Okay. How did you now, obviously you, you learned by doing it um, and you read the book, you know, uh, Rebel Without a Crew, um, Robert Rodriguez. What else did you do to get knowledge as far as like to learn the aspects of film or the basics, you know, just to kind of get a grasp on what it is? Yeah, I mean, mostly just YouTube videos, um, just trying to figure out the, you know, I figured out that pretty much everything at, that they teach you technically at Full Sail, minus the hands-on, of course, is mostly online. It's um, A lot of it is just YouTube videos. So I yes. did a lot of that. And then I also wasn't afraid to ask people who knew a lot more than me. Okay. Um, so I didn't, you know, I never had anyone like in my family or anything like that that are in the in Hollywood or in the business or anything like that. Uh, so I mostly, you know, would seek people out, try and find friends of friends of friends who maybe knew more than me and just like buy them lunch and pick their brain. Okay. Okay. No, that's cool, man. That's cool. Where did you find these people that were in the industry? Online. Ever online, online or um, through people that I knew already. Okay. Uh, you know, at, if I'm if I'm talking to someone, hey, you know, do you want to be in my like crappy little short film that I'm gonna make this weekend? Um, and they'd be like, yeah. And then that's kind of the way that I would start talking to them about it. Yeah, I have this second cousin who made a who was on a movie set one time. Oh, okay, like give me his contact information. I'll talk to him. I don't care who he is. Like, if he's been on a movie set, I want to talk to him. So you just um, went, yes. You were like, hey, you oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but like just doing a lot of favors for people. Okay. Um, if, if you're gonna, I, I had no problem with, I, I mean, I work for free. I s- still work for free. Like this, 
this weekend I'm, I'm driving down to, I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm driving down to South Carolina to shoot something with a friend, you know, not getting a pay in any pay or anything, but it's just like to go do favors for people. Um, oh, and just meet as many people as you can, you know? Yeah. So you're still hustling around and, and working it and things like that. Oh, of course. There's, there's no, um, after you make it, there's definitely nothing glamorous about, uh, after making a movie or anything like that. It's, it's straight, you know, still just trying to, uh, to, to learn. I'm still in the learning phase. We got Alfred. What did you say? My brother from Richmond. Do you know Alfred? Yeah. Alf, Alfred, um, he is a guy in Florida and we actually, I shot, that's where I shot tethered in Florida. Um, he's been like super supportive of everything I've been doing after the fact. And he watched a movie on Amazon. I love that guy. So let me ask you this. Um, so let's get to the movie tethered a little bit. Um, so you read the book, you decided to say, you know what? I'm just going to go make a movie. Right. Um, why Florida? Do you live in like do you have family in Florida or do you live in Florida? Like you're in Pennsylvania right now, right? Right. So I'm in Pennsylvania right now, but um at the time I was living in upstate New York. I would I literally made this movie right after I graduated high school. Um literally like the summer I graduated, I shot I started shooting a movie. So um my parents had a vacation house in Florida. Okay. And I'm sure you guys know it's really, really hard to rent out a house in Florida in the summer. Oh, so yeah. Basically, I was like, hey, you know, there's not going to be anyone in the house for this period of time. Is there any way I could just go stay there and, like, take care of the house for you? <laughs> um, and that's basically how it happened. I was like, I'm going to just go shoot a movie there. Uh, and I, you know, I pretty much had it for free. They were. I was ridiculous. They were ridiculously generous about it. And like, yeah, you can go shoot there. We're not going to be, there's no one going to be there anyway. So go ahead. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to write the movie around this house. Okay. Smart. Very smart. We did the same thing with our first feature. Really? What yeah. did you guys do? We shot a movie called house guest and it was, it was in one location. It was in a house. We did at the beginning, it was at a bar at the beginning, but that was only because the guy, uh, the lead in it owned the bar and the house. So nice. <laughs> we just rode around that. And did, did when you wrote it, were you trying to think of like, okay, how can I keep this guy in the house? Yes. Because uh, that's kind of why I put him on house arrest. Really? Yeah. Is that, that was the reasoning? Absolutely. I, I've never been on house arrest. I don't know anyone who's been on house arrest, but I was trying to figure out how can I contain this inside the house? Not only because this is the only location we have, but because like, Florida heat sucks. I don't want to go outside and have to shoot. So, like, how can I keep everything inside as much as possible? Just keep it simplistic, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit. Um, so you chose Florida because you had the location. Figure it's the best part. Um, when you got – did you start casting and doing all the prep work up where you were and then went down to Florida, or did you do it all in Florida? I did a lot of stuff um, before I came to Florida. I was basically just searching out people online because I didn't know anyone in Florida. Yeah. Um, excuse me. So it goes from, you know, I'm, I'm up in New York trying to figure out, like, I don't know anyone. What am I going to do? So I'm just going to meet as many people as I can so that when I do get there, I know three. If I know three people, then that's a head start. Um, so when I was up there, I met my two producers, Dimitri and Bob, and, um, they grew up in Florida. One of them works at a, uh, Dimitri works at a, uh, you know, film studio where they do, you know, commercials and TV shows and stuff like that. So he knows, you know, every, every single actor and every single, um, guy with a camera in Florida. So he was kind of like a line producer per se. He got all the the, the crew and helped with, with that type. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And he's he's actually casting for that production company. So it was perfect. He knew a ton of people, and that was one of the key thing. That was one of the key persons that I met. I think that like you have to have that one guy who knows everyone, or you have to be that guy. Yeah. So that's... having someone like that, it's like all right, we can set up. You know, we set up two casting calls, um, and we already had a ton of people there because he just like went through his phone contacts and was like, in his Facebook is like, Hey guys, we got a casting for a feature in Florida, which doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. So we got tons and that actually plays to your advantage too, 
because everyone's like, oh, I don't live in Hollywood. I, I, I don't live in Atlanta or New York. I can't like find people to help make a movie. But in reality, you're going to find more people who will work for free for just a credit and food because you're in a place where nothing ever happens. Yeah. So it, people who say that it's just so pessimistic to look at it like that. It's not even true. It's like, you haven't even tried. So, I mean, you're already putting a roadblock in front of you and it's just like, you got to lose that mentality. Yeah. Just look like people, people are looking every day for a feature in, in rural places like Fort Myers, Florida, like no one's doing a feature there. So when people see that, they're like, all right, let's do it. Like they're ready to go. Um, uh, but I kind of got off track, but, um, yeah. So, uh, Dimitri you had somebody just, here, you had a producer here that you contacted, he had all the contacts. Um, let me ask you this. What was your main role? Now I know you, it, you wrote it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I co-wrote it. I wrote it with another guy too. I wrote like, uh, I can't even tell you how many drafts I wrote. And then, um, it's, it was the first feature length script that I wrote. Um, and then I sent it over to a guy that I knew in California who is a mutual friend of uh-huh. someone else. And um, I was like, hey, man, do you want to work on the script? I mean, he, the main thing he wanted was he just wanted to write something that was actually going to get made. He just yeah. kept writing. You know, he had tons of scripts. But, like, you know, California, everyone's making movies, so it's impossible to get a script made. So he was like, yeah, like, I'll help you write it. it, it this thing's going to get made. Like, let's do it. So yeah. I co-wrote it with this guy and he did a ton and he helped out a ton. Um, and then I basically acted as like producer of whatever I could do. And then also director, obviously. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you kind of, and he assembled and things like that. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this then with the two, you said you made on 2000, right? Where did the money, where did you, where did you put the money that you felt would give you the best return as far as, was it the production value was was it the food? Like, where'd the money go? Honestly, probably 80% of it went to food. Um, <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, and our, our shooting uh, schedule was like, I think that that's probably my biggest regret from that movie, which I learned so much from is um, I should have figured out a way to shoot it faster. I, I, we, we shot it fast, but like we didn't shoot it fast enough. How many um, days? I, we did a total of 30 days over five months so just like weekends weekend shoots every every month and obviously you know that's not uh five months straight like we had to do weekends off because you know actors can't some actors are driving from orlando wow Um, okay so i think that that would be one of my biggest things is at the very beginning of the shoot i should have put you know gotten two months maybe three months and just had every single detail like planned out um, and then just followed it to a T as best we could. That that would be my biggest thing that I should have done, and I'll do it from now on. Um, mm-hmm. Because I just what I just didn't know at the end of the day. Like I was just naive to how much work it would actually take to get it done. Um, so now I'm I'm so much more humble than like appreciate the process more. Uh, so you did the breakdown of the script and and uh, did all the like uh, so you like first ad to how many let's go there then how many jobs did you actually do when you were doing this this project did you run camera too and stuff yeah i ran camera so to give you an idea on a, an average day on set we would have three people working crew including me so me and my two producers okay. um we were the crew and on a good day we'd have four or five people that would come in for a weekend and help out um, and then, you what, know, three some days people, it was, that's it? yeah, three people total, including me for a crew. Nice. Um, and on a good day, four or five. Okay. So, uh, and then, but I mean, on some days it was just me. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there was, uh, there was no limitation. I was like, look, if an actor is going to drive from Orlando to here, we're shooting something. Yeah. You know, I don't care if anyone, if no one else can be here, if one actor comes, me and that actor are shooting something. We're getting it so, done. Yeah. So that's kind of what it came down to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I ran camera. I, um, you know, edited. I, I pretty much did whatever needed to be done, realistically. So you basically did basically did it all for the most part. In the I mean, I did it all, but I, I don't, I ne- would never want to take away like everything that my producers did um, just because like, you know, I brought them on and I was like, I, I'm going to like this. We're shooting this for 2000 bucks. I need you guys on set 
for, you know, almost every single weekend that we do it. Um, and they did, you know, they killed it. So you, you can't, I don't think that you can do it. Just, like I couldn't have shot it on my own the whole time. I 100% like would not have been able to do it without them. Yeah. It's tough, dude. It's definitely yeah. tough. Yeah. So, I mean, th- cause that's what kind of, to be honest with you, we just did a movie. We shot a movie called alone just to prove a point. We did it on the same, the same budget. Um, and we kept it in one house. See, we went backwards because our first movie was like that, but we wanted to correct some mistakes that we made in the first one. So we went and proved that you can do it on great quality, great sound. Not much if you have it um, strategically placed. And we usually ran with three people. So you're, if you're a producer, like me as a producer, I was running sound. I was helping to move lights. I broke down the script. You know, my brother was directing and running camera and ACing and focusing. So it just the, well, since we're touching on that a little bit, do you think that it was better than going to film school? I know it's a touchy subject that people are going to be either way. And I know you didn't go to film school, but what are your thoughts on that? Right. So yeah, I didn't go to film school. So I, I, I can really only attest to like, how I look at things and what my experiences have been, what's worked for me. Um, I think that film school is, I I think it is controversial and I see why it is. Right. Um, I, I get it. So for me, film school just wasn't right because first of all, I suck at school. Like that's the biggest thing. I like, I suck at school and that's fine. You know? Um, so what doesn't make sense to me is when, people suck at school, but then they still go to film school. Um, Another thing is like film school. Sure. Can film school be good for meeting people? That's usually the argument. Well, you know, if you're, if you're going to go like, it's a great place to meet people, you can meet people anywhere, you know, but the thing is, it's great for meeting people. It's, it's great for getting in an environment where you're getting a lot of feedback on what you make. Um, but it's also a very expensive way to get that, whereas you can get that for free other places. Yeah, so um, Daniel just said film school, 40K a semester. Yeah, I mean, it, it, ev- let, I mean, even if you like came out of school with, it, with your own feature film that you direct, which you don't, which was the biggest reason that I didn't go, is because you don't come out of film school with a feature, because yeah. coming out with a feature is the only thing that really matters. Yep. Um, right. So my, to play a devil's advocate, I think the biggest argument for film school is if you want to go into a field that is below the line, um, or if you want to be someone who is doing DP stuff to where you're all technical, you know, if you want to be a sound guy, all, you need to know everything. And if you don't know every, everything about that specific equipment, then you're not going to get hired. So yeah. I, I do see why someone, if you want to be a director, I don't know why you'd go to film school. Um, yeah, I agree. But, you know, if you want to be controlling a, a million dollar camera, then you sh- maybe you should go to film school. I think, and I get where you're going because I think it's more of entrepreneur, an entrepreneur that's more of a producer, more of a director, somebody that likes to control their destiny more, I feel like don't need film school. But if you, like you said, if you want to work a job and you want that security, per se security. If you want to work, have that security of a nine to five and knowing your next job, then, then yeah, go to film school and spend that money, but you're going to be in debt. And it's, it's going to, I think it's going to do a lot to hinder you as well in a way. Um, Cause I never went to film school and I'm with you on that. Um, I'm actually, I dropped out at 15 and started working full time and I just loved films and I wanted to get into the business so I can totally kind of relate to where you talk about having, you know, being bad at school. It just wasn't your thing. Yeah, it just wasn't my thing. And I also want to say, like, I think that if you do decide to go to film school, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't think that, you know, you can't be successful because you go to film school. Like 100 percent, if you, you know do all the right things in film school and, and get it together, then I, I have no doubt that you can be successful. Just like someone who doesn't go to film school. Yeah. I don't think that film, I, I guess I don't think that film school determines whether you're successful or not. Agreed. Agreed. I agree with you on that. Now let's talk about, because what we're going to do after this guy, so everybody watching, 
Um, we've got some people out there watching and that are, you know, tuned into the live here. We're actually going to play the documentary he made on the actual movie Tethered. So we're going to we're going to stream that live for you guys after this on Jabba Brothers and we're going to share that. So make sure you guys check that out because that's going to I think give more it does it, it gives more detail and it gives more in-depth look at what you guys went through, right? Yeah, I mean my idea at the very we what we did is we made like um little episodes, right, of kind of what was going on behind behind the scenes and uh-huh. we put those out while we were making the movie. So cool. My idea with that is, hey, people can check out what we're doing behind the scenes, and then maybe they'll want to follow along to where when the movie gets released, they'll want to buy the movie. Um, that was kind of my entire idea behind it. And, you know, we did those episodes, and it was really great, and it seemed to work. Um, and then eventually, you know, we get to the end of, of production, and I uh, release – actually, I start editing the movie, and I'm like – We've got all this footage, all this behind the scenes footage, it's just people picking up a camera um, that we had on set. We had a dedicated, you know, T3I or something on, on set um, that we said, hey, whenever you want, grab this camera and film something. Um, okay. If you're not doing anything, film something. So I, I basically just compiled all of that footage and thought, you know, we easily have like a, a feature film here, another feature film that we can make. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great story. Uh, so, so you I mean, shot two movies on two grand. Technically, yeah, I guess we did. Well, no, that's not technically true because um, I bought nine dollars worth of music on the documentary. So oh. that's technically <laughs> not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess yeah, technically. But you know, I think it's a I think it's a fun documentary, and I think that any like young filmmaker who's aspiring to 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 make movies or growing any storytelling would find it super interesting yeah yeah that's cool that's why we're going to air it in two and and uh also you guys uh that are listening in um you guys can watch the movie on uh amazon prime so if you guys actually want to take a look at what they did you know feel free to check it out leave some comments leave reviews um uh, it really helps uh you know uh independent filmmakers like like uh, Chris that are trying to do it and come up and, and make a name for himself and uh, make a, a name for himself in the industry. Uh, we got, let's see, is this a question here? Uh, it's more important to know business than, than film NBA business, make a, a studio. Run. Yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with that uh, some points, but you got to know the skills. I feel like you need to know the technical aspect. You know, you need to understand a little bit of lighting, a little bit of everything, right? Is that, is, is, do you make money shooting video? How do you make a living? Yeah, I mean, I'm so right now I own a couple of small businesses that I um, that I kind of make money from here and there. Okay. Um, I do make money through filmmaking. I'm currently working on a couple more projects where um, some I get paid and some I don't get paid. Okay. Um, but mostly, yeah, it's just like whatever I'm doing as an entrepreneur is what's paying me. Okay. So, but yeah, I guess I do agree with that, what that comment was, uh, but I, I do think it depends on what you want to do, right? If you want to be a producer and you don't know the business, then a hundred percent, like you can't be a producer if you don't understand business. Um, when it comes to like being an editor, do you really need to know the business? Mm, maybe not as much, but yeah, I, I think that it, it does, does depend on what you want to do. So what... Let's 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 uh, I, I'll probably bring this thing to an end a little bit because we want to uh, air that live stream for them. Um, what is one of the number one things that really stands out maybe in your mind that you learned from the process of I, I know you probably learned a lot doing it, but what's the biggest thing that you really took from making the feature? You know, recently I've been thinking about that a lot and I think that what it really comes down to, and I don't know this, um, I can only speak to what I, what I feel is right. Uh Um, but I think that what it comes down to is making yourself prepared to be in the right place at the right time. Um, I think that so much of, of filmmaking comes down to like, it does come down to who, you know, you know, the more people, you know, um, the more chances you have of being at the right place at the right time. And you have to be prepared to be in that place when you get to it. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing I learned. 
right. And, and what do you got going on next, man? What's your what you got any scripts in the works, any projects? I know you said you're working on something in, I think you said South Carolina. Um, any features or anything like that? Yeah, I got a uh, a script that I, I finished a script. I wrote the script in like five weeks. Um, and we're uh, we're gonna be working on that. We're in pre production on that. And that one is about three guys who go and stay in a cabin and then they film themselves trying to stay awake for an entire week straight. That's pretty cool. I like that, man. Um, so that's the next one that I'm working on. And, uh, that, that should be, that should be a fun one. And where are you filming that one? We're looking somewhere in the mountains, South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, around there. Okay. That sounds interesting. I'll be looking for that brother. Keep, keep us posted, man. Where can they follow you? Where can they check you out? Where are you located on the internet? <laughs> Uh, I'm at uh, Lynchpin Films on everything, L-I-N-C-H-P-I-N Films on, on pretty much everything. Um, so, yeah, you can tweet me or something and <laughs> or whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome, awesome, brother. Well, hey, man, we appreciate you having uh, – coming on the show and, and, and spitting some of the knowledge you learned. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is is to try to work as a crew, whether we work together on a project or we just work together – uh, over the internet and help each other out and give each other the knowledge that, um, like you said, you reach out, you ask somebody, Hey, how did you do this? They give you a little bit and then you go do it. Yep. You know, so I appreciate you coming on brother. Thanks man. I, I really do appreciate it. All right guys. Java brothers here. They're not fucking around crew and, uh, make sure you guys check out tethered. Make sure you check out, stick around for the live stream of why not documentary and how he made a movie for two grand. All right, peace.